You know, last week I talked about, if, if you want to know what, the, what, what Jesus' priority was, look at what he did. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power went about doing good. He went about doing good. He went about doing good. Priority, doing good. Healing all that were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. It was a priority. Everywhere he went, he was teaching the word, revealing the Father's heart. Come on, saying only what the Father said, doing only what he saw the Father do. Come on, amen. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I wonder if it's God's will that I be healed. What did Jesus do? What did he do? He healed people. He never... This is week number four of Jesus, our healer. Everybody say, Jesus, Jesus. Our, healer. our healer. Now personalize it. Jesus, Jesus. my healer. My healer. <laughs> he is your healer, amen? amen? You may not know that, but he is. He is your healer. I, I actually kind of wonder where I'm going today. And, and what I'm trying to learn is I'm, I'm trying to get back to uh, some of the way it used to be. And, 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 and listen, I got to tell you, preparation is important. Uh, but, but I think what we've done sometimes is we've, we've elevated technology over being led by the Spirit. Now, why am I saying that? Uh, because I work hard on putting a message together. I, I put it together. I craft it. I listen to God. I believe I'm being led by God. And I craft all the slides you get to see. You know, Jesus, our healer. Isn't that a beautiful slide? That's wonderful. Somebody created that for us. Amanda, our, our graphics uh, person. She does a great job. But, but sometimes we get so tied to the technology and all of a sudden, the Spirit of God says, yeah, but there's somebody in the room today. I want you to go this way. Well, why didn't you tell me? You knew that. You knew they'd be here. Why did I just spend two days working on all this stuff? Because I believe he wants you to walk by faith and not by sight. And I don't believe it's true. And I don't believe any of the preparation I've done is a waste of time because the preparation I've done, even if I never get to the slides, the preparation I've done feeds toward where he may want to take us. I trust him. Amen? I trust him. Now with that said, I, I just believe we need to get back to, I just believe we, oh, you can bring that to me? Yeah. And here, here I forgot my Bible. I'll be 66 years old next week, so that's old. Older. Older. I don't mind. I don't mind. 66 looks great. What's that? Next month. What did I say? Next week. Not next week. If you were already planning in your mind a present to buy, hold that thought. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You know what somebody brought me today? Ah, this is so cool. Nobody's ever bought me anything like this. They bought a stuffed teddy bear for me. It was the coolest thing. Now, if you weren't here a few weeks ago when I shared some of the things I really enjoy, I like stuffed animals. That doesn't mean go buy me a stuffed animal, all right? <laughs> Our bed's going to be full of them, Joy. Probably not. Probably not. So, so I'll be 66 next month. And, and, I know some people say, well, it's because you're that age. It's because you're, you're kind of old school. Listen, I've not been old school. I've, I've been trying to adapt to technology. I've, I've, I've adapted quite well to it. But there's something about this book. There's something about having this with you on your lap and being able to look at it as the preacher is preaching. There's something about the old school. I'll tell you what, I love the technology. I do my Bible reading on this every morning. There's nothing wrong with that. But I got to tell you, there's something very, very special about taking out that old Bible and turning to a page and seeing the notes that you wrote last year, the year before, two years ago, and go, wow, I wrote that. I remember that. Wow, that means so much more. There's something about the old school way of studying. Come on, amen. Of studying and learning and growing. And, and I'm just going to encourage you.
Some of you used to do it. You've gotten away from it. Uh, it it's, one, it's a discipline I've never gotten away from. If I'm sitting there when somebody's preaching, I've got a notepad. I am taking notes. If you don't take notes, if, or when you, when, when you listen, you remember about 6 to 8% of what you hear. Some of you go in the love chapter, you won't remember anything I preached. Hey, what did he preach? Oh, it was good. I don't remember. It was good, though. I know it's about healing, but I can't remember anything. If you write it down uh, on, on paper, that goes up to, I don't know, 40, 45, 50%. If you write it down on paper, go back and read it again, study it again, you can uh, achieve up to 75, 80% retention. I'm telling you, you're learning life-giving things in this church. Uh, and, and, and wherever you learn from, you, need to, you don't just need to accumulate it, you need to remember it, amen? There, you're learning things that will set you free, that will save your life. And it's not because I'm so good, it's because he's so good. It's because the word is powerful. Amen? Amen. So I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I don't care if I ever do slides. I probably will. I'm going to read a couple of them in a minute. But I don't care if I ever do slides. I don't care if I ever get to slides. I, 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 want, to, I want to get back to the basics. There, there's some basics we've left behind. Uh, I, I've said this. I'll probably say it during this message. The church needs to get its fight back. That, that tepid applause proves it. <laughs> no, we need to get our fight back. We, we, when the devil comes at us, we need to know what to do. We need to get our fight back. I, I'm, I, I'm not going to put up, I'm not going to put up with what he's doing to me. I'm not going to put up with what he's doing to, to the church and, and to our nation and around the world. I'm not going to put up with that. We are on this planet for a reason, people. We are here to, we're here to possess the land to declare your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We are here for a purpose. And we got to get our fight back. I'm tired of getting run over by the devil. I, I, I'm going to take it back. Devil, give it back. Devil, give it back. Give back our families. Give back our property. Give back our money. Give back our people. Give back our church. Devil, give it back. we got to get our fight back. It's time to get our fight back. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 53, up on the screen, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. The prophet Isaiah wrote that 700 and some years before Jesus ever came on the scene. Amazing to me. Amazing how accurate that was. If you look at that word grief, and I know, I'll let you sit down in a minute, just a minute. The word grief is the Hebrew word koli, and it literally means sickness. It's not, it's not saying he carried our griefs. It's saying he carried in his body your sickness. So if he carried it, you don't carry it. I didn't say you don't have it. I didn't say you don't have it. I didn't say you don't get attacked with it. I said you need to stop carrying it. Amen? Amen? And he carried our sorrows. The word sorrow is a Hebrew word, makab. And, and the word makab literally means pain. Physical, mental, emotional pain. He bore my pain. He bore my sickness. And if he bore it, I need not bear it in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. And then over in 1 Peter 2.24, and then I'll let you sit down. He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross, that we being dead to sin and, and, and live for what is right, and by his wounds you are healed. Before I go, go any further, is there, is there a parent here? And it, I guess it could be a grandparent, but you've got a child that is suffering, it, it's unusual, you don't know where it came from, but suffering from nosebleeds. Nosebleeds. During worship, I mean, that just came real strong. Anybody, just wave your hand. 
Just wave your hand. Nosebleeds, nosebleeds, nosebleeds. Anybody else? There's one over here. All right. It, it, it stops today. It stops today. Here's the thing. We just speak the name of Jesus. In fact, if, if that was you, just put your hand back up. A couple of people around him. Lay hands on him. Lay hands on him as a point of contact. You may not be praying for the child. That's okay. Uh, the parent is the spiritual authority in that home. So we just, we just declare right now that those nosebleeds stop now in Jesus' name. No more nosebleeds. No more nosebleeds. No more nose, nosebleeds. Father God, I thank you for that. We just command healing in these bodies. And we are in agreement. And there's power in that place of agreement. So we just thank you for it, Father God. It ends now, today, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, everybody said? Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Go ahead and be seated. Go ahead and be seated. Some of you say, you ought to be dismissing us right about now, don't you think? No, I got a little more to say. I don't have a lot of time to say it, but I'm going to say it. Is that okay? You don't have anywhere to go. It's a sunny, warmer day. You don't have anything to do. <laughs> I really appreciate all of you coming. It's, it's awesome. It is. Man, uh, some days, man, it gets nice and warm and all that, and you just, you just kind of want to skip church, don't you? My wife told me I had to come today, though, so. <laughs> uh, oh, man. One, one thing you need, if, if, you don't, if you don't have one of these cards and you need healing scriptures, go ahead and get one of these. They're out in the lobby. Uh, it, it'll help you to understand what he says about healing. Let me ask you a question. What are you in agreement with? What are you in agreement with? Who are you in agreement with? It's an important question. So stay with me, okay? Who are you in agreement with? What are you in agreement with? In Matthew chapter 18, uh, uh, go ahead and write that down. Mar uh, Matthew chapter 18, verse 19. It's this amazing scripture, and you ought to read the whole context because it's, uh, there's a lot of forgiveness stuff in there. I'll get to that in a little bit, maybe. But, but it's, a, it's a scripture about agreement, and it says, if any two of you on earth shall agree, or shall agree on earth as touching anything that they ask, it will be done of my Father who is in heaven. If any two of you will agree on earth, if any two of you will agree on earth. So, so who are you in agreement with? What are you in agreement with? And, and let me tell you something. You say, well, I don't say anything. I don't do anything. Listen, silence is agreement. Silence is agreement. You know, it would be like some people, they say, well, I never rejected Jesus. Uh, well, uh, listen, if you've never accepted him, then by default, you have rejected him. But I, I never thought that way. It doesn't matter. You've been confronted with the gospel. If you don't accept him, then by default, you have rejected Jesus as Lord of your life. Silence is agreement. If any two of you will agree on earth as touching anything that they ask, it'll be done in my Father who is in heaven. So who are you in agreement with? It's, it's an incredibly important uh, thing for you to answer. In, in Matthew chapter 16, Jesus has this conversation with his disciples. And you'll remember it. I think I brought it up last week or the week before. He, he, he says to his disciples, who do you say that I am? Right? Who do you say that I am? And, and their answer is, it, it's very good. Well, we've heard uh, that you're Isaiah the prophet. We've heard that you're John the Baptist. We heard this. We heard that. And, and then he says this. He says, uh, but, but who do you say that I am? I, I don't know. I thought about that. And I thought, well, why would he, why, why would he just cut, the, cut to the chase? Why did he have to ask him, what is, what is everybody saying about me? Who cares what everybody's saying about me? I want to know what you're saying about me. Come on, right? And he'd ask you that today. What are you saying about him? So I thought about that, and I thought, why would he ask him first, uh, you know, what is everybody saying about me? What is the world saying about me? Now, what do you say about me? Now, I believe there's a reason that he did that. 
I think the reason he did that is he wanted to know how has the opinion of the world changed your opinion of who I am? We live in a very opinionated world today. I think we'd agree with that. Everybody exalts their opinion uh, even above the Lord Jesus Christ. They, re they really do. I mean, get me to talk about abortion in this church. And I mean, people want me hung on a, uh, hung on a hook. You shouldn't talk about politics. I didn't. I talked about morality. They'll be quiet. You don't, you don't like that? I'm sorry. I, I'm not here to please you. I, I, I care about you, but I'm not here to please you. So how is the world affecting how we think about God? How is the world affecting how we think about healing? Go home and turn TV on. Actually, game, turn on Game Show, show Network or Buzzer or, or Me TV. you know, some of the nostalgia channels. Anybody ever watch those? I mean, the older you get, probably the more of those you watch. I was telling somebody out in the lobby today, I said, I, said, uh, I got an old man's shirt on. They're, they're just buttons, snap buttons. Isn't that great? <laughs> It's like I'm wearing a onesie. <laughs> oh, man, next step is Velcro shoes. I know. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. If you got either of those, well, not if you got the onesie thing, I'm sure. I hope. Praise the Lord. We'll pray for you. <laughs> but you watch those channels, especially some of those channels, and you know as well as I do what's going to come on. Just about every time they go to a commercial, they're going to tell you about some kind of drug that you need. Is there anybody here that can write their own prescriptions? Can I see your hands? Maybe you're a doctor. God bless you. You can do it. But any, anybody here, the general public, can you write your own prescription? Why are they advertising to us? I can't write my own prescription because they know I'm going to go to my doctor and I'm going to say, hey, I heard about this drug. I want that. It sounds like it'll be good for me. And the doctor, because of malpractice and insurance, he's going to prescribe it to you because I don't want to, I don't want to be sued if I don't. Do you, you, you see that? How is the world affecting our opinion about healing? Because if you listen, you, you ever watch those commercials? You've ever noticed, you know, they, they say, hey, we see you're having this kind of a problem. They show somebody just in there, uh, you know, like they're dying. And then all of a sudden, they start talking about the drug and they kind of perk up and you see them frolicking through the leaves and, you know, just having a wonderful time. You know, they're enjoying their family. They're having cake and ice cream. They got balloons everywhere. The whole time you're seeing these pleasant pictures, they're telling you how if you take this drug, it may kill you. Your nose may fall off. Uh, you know, I mean, you, you may go blind, but hey, you won't, you know, you won't have an earache anymore. Won't that be great? But, but seriously, I mean, how, how is the world around us squeezing us into the mold, the conformity? It's a real thing, folks. How are we being conformed? Who are you in agreement with? Uh, he said, who do men say that I am? How is our opinion of who he is being affected by the world around us, by our friends, by our family? You show me who you spend all your time with. I'll show you where your life is leading in five years. It's true. Uh, uh, you know, you, you hang around the wrong people, your life is not going to, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to influence them. No, the Bible says they're going to influence you. Yeah. It's just how it is. I mean, how, how is the world, the opinion, how is it affecting what you think about God, what you think about healing, what you think about the Word of God? How is it affecting you today? Because I'm a pastor, and I've watched how it affects us. I've watched, a I've watched how it affects me. I've seen it. I, 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 I've, I've had to repent for some things that I've allowed to go in a direction that shouldn't have gone. And I've had to repent for it. and I've had to say, God, I'm back on track. Let's go. Come on, I got my fight back. Let's do this thing, right? Yeah. Amen. So I, I, I just, I just want to ask you. How has the world around you shaped your opinion? How has it shaped your beliefs? Can I tell you an observation? March of 2021, there was this little thing called a pandemic that hit. We began to hear about it in, in January of that year. 
2020. We began to hear a little bit about it, and, 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 and then by March, we had to shut down. And, and we, I mean, we'd never been down this road before. We had a meeting with my executive team. We met with our leaders. We said, what do we do? We, we've never heard this before. We've never seen anything like this. Let's shut down for now. Let's figure it out. And I've said this before. I'll never do that again. Trust me, I will never shut down again. I don't, I don't care. I don't care. You say, oh, you don't love us. No, I won't shut down because I do love you. So, so here's the thing. Whether you agree with me or not, listen, I'm pastoring this thing. I, I've got to answer for the, for the decisions I make. Amen. So I, I get that, all right? I'm responsible for that. But I, but I watched this pandemic hit. I, I saw how we reacted to it. And, and what I saw, uh, listen, this whole pandemic revealed much of who was shaping our opinions and what we were believing. Yeah. I saw a church community, not everybody, obviously, thank God, but I saw a church community, I mean, absolutely a retreat into fear. And you had been, we had been sitting listening to faith, listening about, uh, about doing war, spiritual war. Devil, you can't have it in the name of Jesus. You can't take it. Uh, you know, come on, declaring the word of God. And, and, and we were learning these things, the authority of the believer, and, and man, I preached my heart out week after week, year after year, decade after decade, and then a pandemic hits. Who are we in agreement with? All of a sudden, we began to agree with what the world was saying. I, I didn't say don't listen. I didn't say don't care. I didn't say any of those things. But here's the deal. Eventually, we got to make a decision. Who is our Lord? Who is our King? Who is the, what is the word that we follow? Amen? Because if you think, listen, if you think that's all over with, listen, you think that's all over with because, uh, you know, we, we have a president that said, hey, the pandemic's over. And, you know, thank God he finally did. You know, pandemic's over. Well, well good. All it took was somebody saying it. You know, pandemic's over. I guess it is. You think that's, you think that's the end of this nonsense? I'll tell you what, there's other stuff right around the corner. And, and you know what the pandemic was? You know what COVID was? And I, I'm not, I'm not, listen, I care. I care deeply that somewhere around a million Americans died. I care deeply. And some of them are your loved ones. I care deeply about that. So do not misunderstand. But that was, that was a test. That was a worldwide test to see what had to happen to get a whole world to shut down and walk in lockstep like lemmings toward a cliff and just fall off because the other lemming went there too. I'm, I'm telling you right now, we better decide what side of this equation we're going to be on. Who do we believe? Whose report do you believe? As for me, we believe the report of the Lord. Come on, amen? Amen. I, I, bear with me just for uh, another hour. Just, just, just. Uh, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. There are all these scriptures about healing. You know, last week I talked about if, if you want to know what, the, what, what Jesus' priority was, look at what he did. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power went about doing good. He went about doing good. He went about doing good. Priority, doing good. Healing all that were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. It was a priority. Everywhere he went, he was teaching the word, revealing the Father's heart. Come on, saying only what the Father said, doing only what he saw the Father do. Come on, amen. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I wonder if it's God's will that I be healed. What did Jesus do? What did he do? He healed people. He never made them sick. He never broke their stuff. He never, come on, he never gave them disease. He, he didn't do that. Je if Jesus didn't do it, we know the will of the Father is to bring healing, health, and wholeness to us. Amen? Amen. So we see scripture all over the place. The priority of God. Beloved, I pray above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. 3 John 2. 
Uh, Psalm 107, verse 20, he sent his word and healed them, delivered them from destruction. He sent his word. John chapter 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And the word, and the word became flesh and dwelled among us. Who was the word? It was Jesus. What was the word? It was God. Come on, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. Jesus was God. Amen. Come on, amen? So if you want to know the will of God, look at what Jesus did. Come on, look at what he did. He forgave people. He healed people. That is the will of God. Amen. And we, we go all through Scripture. Psalm 103, he, it, it says, He forgives all my iniquities. Verse 3, He forgives all my iniquities. He heals all of my disease. In, in Exodus chapter 15, He's revealed one of the compound names for God. He's revealed as Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals. Amen? Come on, all this. it's so amazing. What, all through Scripture, it shows His will is to heal. I think you ought to learn what the Word says about healing. I, I, in fact, I know you need to learn. But let me just tell you, it doesn't do you any good just to be able to quote the Scriptures. I know a lot of people can quote a lot of Scriptures. I said this a number of weeks ago. You can know the Word of God, but if you don't have a revelation of the God of the Word, the Word of God doesn't do you any good if you don't have a revelation of the God of the Word. Come on, amen? You need to know His heart because when you know His heart, the Word makes sense. Amen. Come on, amen? It makes sense. His heart is amazing toward you. So you can know the Word of God. You can quote the Word of God. A parrot can quote the Word of God if it's trained well. And a lot of times, I think that's all we got in the body of Christ is a bunch of parrots. We can quote it, but do you believe it? We've, we've been satisfied pastors. Trust me, I'm talking about me now. We've been satisfied as pastors to provide to the congregation information. Now, that was part of my job, to inform you what the Word of God says. But let me tell you, the accumulation of information is not what's going to heal your body. It is the revelation of who He is if you've got an accumulation of information and you don't have a revelation of who Jesus is, why he came, what he did, the heart of God, if you don't have a revelation, all you got is a bunch of words and you may as well say, and, uh, you may as well be saying, twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are, because it's about as good as that. Say, so, wait a minute, the word of God is powerful. Yes, it is. On the lips of somebody that knows the promise giver behind it. If you don't know the promise giver behind it, you don't know the heart of the one that said it, the heart of the one that promised it, then you are actually powerless. Acts chapter 19. In Acts chapter 19, we see a story, uh, and, and I, I have no fear. I might close with this. I said might. So we see a story of... of these, these sons of a man named Sceva. Now, if you'd named your child Sceva, God bless you. Not going to make fun of it, but the seven sons of one named Sceva, Acts 19 says. So, so all of a sudden, they see somebody demonically possessed, and, and what do they do? They, they walk up to this man that's demonically possessed, and they say, we, uh, King James says it this way, we adjure you. Uh, that's just a fancy word for we command you, or we, uh, we, we speak boldly to you. We adjure you in the name of Jesus that Paul preaches. See, they had watched Paul. They saw what Paul was doing. They saw the miracles that were happening. Uh, you know, listen, there was a time where, uh, you know, a piece of cloth was taken from Paul and laid on somebody sick, and that sick person was healed. Yeah. All right, that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. I love that. In fact, I just shared a testimony with Pastor Hagen. I sent it to him this week. Uh, a family here that uh, they brought a shoe of a little boy that had been, the parents had been told he'll, he won't walk. 
And I, I think he was like three years old. And, and he's crawling around. I and mean, there's a video of him crawling around. He's, he's not walking. And, and then there's a video of Pastor Hagen over here with the prayer cloths and all this. Well, they didn't have a prayer cloth. They had one of his shoes. So it was up there. And we see the video of Pastor and Mrs. Hagen over there praying over that shoe. Well, the next video that we were able to send them is this little boy. This was in October, all right? This little boy is walking and running 100% healed in Jesus' name. Oh! So how did that happen? Well, somebody just believed the Word. We just believed the Word. Amen? So here's this, uh, the seven sons of one named Sceva, and they go up and they say, we adjure you by the name that, of Jesus that Paul preaches. Come out! Well, what happened? <laughs> it wasn't good. The demon did come out. Sure enough, came out, jumped on all of them, beat them to a pulp, stripped them naked. They ran away. The Bible says they ran away naked, bloodied, and bruised. Not exactly the outcome you want. Would you agree? Well, we got them. We got them free. <laughs> uh, yeah, but look at you. Why did that happen? Because they were trying to preach. They were trying to minister under someone else's revelation. You can't minister under somebody else's revelation. You got to get your revelation. Come on. Your, your body. Come on. You can give God thanks. That's good. Your body, your children, your family, listen, you've got to, you've got to be convinced healing is for me. It's for me. It's for my family. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend my life speaking the word over my kids, speaking the word over my family, speaking the word over my marriage. And I'm going to believe it. I'm going to meditate it. I'm going to get it on the inside of me. And the more I do, the more I get to know him, the more I'm going to believe his word. Yeah. Come on, Amen. Last Monday, Monday's my day off, and I, I, I you know, I don't know, I kind of relaxed for a little bit. And that was about 7.15, 7.20. I went in to get the garbage out of the kitchen, gather garbage around the house, take it out. It's garbage day. Got to take it out to the street. So I'm in the kitchen. I pull out. It's in a cabinet. I pull out the thing, get, get the garbage out. And something, I, I pulled the bag up. It wasn't a heavy bag, not a lot of weight in it, but I pulled it up. And when I did, my back gave out. I went, oh! And I groaned really loud. And I kind of laid on the counter like this. Well, Joy was, in the, I think, in the bedroom or something. She came running out. She goes, what happened? I said, oh, my back. I mean excruciating pain. If you, if you know, you know. I don't have to tell you. And I'm just sitting there, and, and listen, I'm not, I'm not going to say, oh, you know, I, I, my, my back's messed up. I'm probably going to have a rough day today. I better, I better go to bed. I'm not saying you're wrong if you do that. But what happened at that moment that that occurred now will help determine what's going to happen over the next hours and days. I can't allow that to become a stronghold. I cannot allow that to just sit and do nothing about it. Now, my wife came. She laid hands on me. She spoke the word. She prayed for me. Believers lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Thank God. I'm glad she did that. That's good. And I want to tell you something. Recovery began right then. It felt better almost immediately. But it wasn't 100%. It wasn't 100%. Uh, throughout the day, there were times I just turned wrong. It was like, mm. You know what I'm talking about. If you've ever had a bad back, you know what I'm talking about. And, and every once in a while, but I want to tell you, every time that happened, out of my mouth, not because it's on some card or anything like that, it's because I've got the revelation that healing is mine. It is mine. He paid for it. He paid for it. Listen, if you told me, go down to the dealership, I just paid for a brand new Cadillac Escalade for you. And I go down to the dealership and they show me the Escalade. I'm like, that's beautiful. It's got every, every uh, option on it you could imagine. Uh, to buy that thing probably cost me two grand a month just to pay for it. I can't believe it. it's beautiful. It's awesome. So how much do I have to borrow to buy that car? I said, why would you want to borrow to buy that car? Well, because I'm buying that car. No, 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 it's paid for. Somebody already paid for it for you. Yeah, but I really want to pay for that car. What are you, crazy? 
No, I really feel like I need to. You've lost your mind. Here's the key. Just drive away. Seriously. How many of you know we don't need to pay for what he already paid for? He paid for it. Come on. So throughout the day, I I, I was shopping and my Monday run to Costco. Hallelujah. (laughs) Right at the right time, right when the samples are at their highest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. (laughs) <laughs> I can help you on the way out. I'll tell you when that is. It's just perfect. It's beautiful. But I'm walking around, and all of a sudden, I, I, I've been to look at something, and ugh, what do you do? What do you do throughout the day? In the name of Jesus, no weapon formed against me will prosper. Every tongue that rises up against me, I will condemn. I know you condemn it. I condemn it. In Jesus' name, believers lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. And I would just speak the word over my life because I believe the word. It's not because I'm hoping so. It's because I believe the word. Come on, amen. amen. And, and I'll tell you what, within, within later that night, almost no symptoms of my back being bad. The next morning, you know, a little bit, and I just began again speaking the word over my body. And later in the day, speaking the word over my body. And I'll tell you what, you know, Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know what? Somebody's going to show that clip with no sound. It's just going to be Pastor Gumby up there. <laughs> what is that guy doing? Oh, he's, he's one of those, he's one of them word of faith preachers. He's probably possessed. You know? It's been said about me. Come on, let's stand up. Come on, come on, man. We got to get our fight back. We got to get our fight back. What did Jesus fight with? He fought with the word. Come on, he fought with the word. Amen? We got to get our fight back. Speak the word. Speak the word over your situation. Amen? Say to that mountain, be thou removed, be cast into the sea. Don't doubt in your heart, believe the things you say will come to pass. Mark chapter 11, verse 23 and 24. Come on, amen? Amen? We got we to live that way. That's not something you try. It's a lifestyle. <laughs> Amen? Amen? How many of you were here a couple of weeks ago where I, I ministered to people, if somebody, oh, there he is, uh, how I ministered to people with a, a broken soul? Yeah. Remember that? A couple of, couple of weeks ago? I mean, so many people. Man, they came up and said, man, I needed that so bad. The one thing I forgot, though, because I was thinking about this in regard to Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11 says, have the faith of God. Your translation will most likely say have faith, have faith in God. But if you read the context of Mark chapter 11, Jesus just got done talking to a tree. The tree died. He talked to a tree. Who was Jesus? He was God, right? He was God. He talked to a tree. The tree died. And when the disciples said, hey, look, the tree you cursed, it withered from the very root. He said, yes, and if you say to the mountain, be thou removed. So is Jesus God? Did by by his faith, did he speak to that tree and it died? Yes. So he says, have the faith of God, have the same kind of faith that I operated in, and now speak to your mountain. Come on now, amen. Speak to your mountain be removed, be cast in the sea. Don't doubt in your heart, believe the things you say will come to pass. You'll have the things you say. It's not a word of faith doctrine. It's the Bible. It's not a grace Christian church. It's in the Bible. But then verse 25 says, and if you have, if you have ought against anybody, forgive them. When you stand praying, forgive. When you stand praying, forgive. Come on. Amen. It's directly tied to have the faith of God speaking to your mountain. Oh, and by the way, you better forgive because if you don't forgive, you're not forgiven. Some of you have been trying to operate the principles of God while walking with offense, with walking with, you know, you had a broken soul. And the one thing that I didn't lead you through, the person that broke your soul, you need to forgive them. It could be the key that unlocks the door to your healing. You need to forgive them. Amen? Amen. Come on, amen? Amen. Three people you need to forgive. You need to forgive the person that did that to you, abused you, misused you, whatever, whatever happened. 
betrayed you, you need to forgive them. You know who else you need to forgive? You need to forgive God. Forgive God. Yeah, forgive God. He's a good God. Amen? Amen? And then the third person you need to forgive, for third one, is who do, who do you think? Yourself. You need to forgive yourself. You know what? That's the one I struggle with most. I, I don't know about you. I struggle with that the most. I've called myself an idiot more times than I can imagine. What a fool. Why'd you do that? What a, how stupid. And it's like, listen, that's not the kind of talk that you talk over somebody who's made in the image of God, made the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen? Come on, amen. you got to forgive yourself. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you. I'm so grateful, Father God, for this word. I'm so grateful, Father God, for the power of your word. You did send your word, and you healed them and delivered them from destruction. So, Father God, your word has gone out, and I thank you, Lord. The healer is in this house right now. Grace is a healing place. And I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful, Father God. I just speak healing over bodies. Over bodies right now. I speak healing over bodies. Listen, if you need healing in your body right now, just lift your hand real high. Lift your hand. Turn, turn the keys up just a little bit for me, okay? If you need healing in your body, Lift your hand up and keep it up. Anybody around these people, listen, I don't want the focus and attention to be on the healing anointing that is on my life. I, I believe the healing anointing is here because number one, you're a believer. Number two, it's something that this house carries. And that's not to exalt this house, this church, this pastor whatsoever. I believe it's one of the ancient wells that we're redigging because our heritage has healing in it. My grandparents, I don't have time to go into it. Come on, command healing in their bodies right now. Jesus didn't say pray for the sick, he said heal the sick. So command it, use your authority and command healing right now over their bodies. Come on, do it, uh, do it like you mean it, all right? Come on, do it like you mean it, go ahead. Go ahead, come on, do it. Turn it up a little bit more. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We command healing right now. We command healing in these bodies. We thank you, Father God. Jesus, you are the healer. You bore our grief, our, 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 our sickness. You carried our, our, our sorrows, our, our pain, uh, our mental pain, our emotional pain, our physical pain. You carried it. And what you carried, we need not carry. So we speak uh, to these bodies. And we command healing in them now in Jesus' name. We command healing. And Father God, for those that are standing in for someone else, Father, we pray for, I won't mention last names, but we pray for Brian. We pray for Brian who wasn't able to make it today. Diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. In the name of Jesus, we speak healing over Brian's life right now in Jesus' name. Uh, Father God, I thank you. I thank you that cancer has got to shrivel up and die. Every, every foreign cell, every cell of his body comes back into what is normal, the way you created it to be in Brian's life. We thank you for it, God. And Father God, give them a revelation of your love. In fact, everybody in here, Lord God, I pray a revelation of the depth of your love in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All right, those of you that were just prayed for, how many would say, you know what, uh, just check it out. Maybe it's your back, maybe whatever. You, you say, you know what, eh, maybe about 10% better. Anybody? You feel a little bit better? All right. How, how about 50% how about better? 50%. It's not all the way, but you feel like 50% better. Anybody? Come on, keep your hand up. You got to wave it at me so I can see real good, okay? All right. How, about, how many of you say, you know what? I am 100%. It's gone. Let me see your hands. Wave it at me. Wave it at me. All right. All right. Hand. Where's another one? Come on, wave it. Keep waving. Keep waving. Thank God. Thank God. Listen. As soon as you walk out this door, even those of you that only felt 10% different, 
right when you walk out that door, the devil's going to tell you you didn't get anything. I'm, I'm, I'm serious as I can be. You didn't get anything. Nothing happened for you. It's going to come back. You've been prayed for before. You're going to have all these battles going on. Get your fight back. Speak the word over that. Jesus is Lord over your body, not the lies of the enemy. Amen? I didn't say deny what you feel. Don't deny what you feel. Just speak the word above what you feel. Come on, amen? I am healed. I'm healed, healthy and whole, from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. In Jesus' name. Come on, amen? Amen. Thank God. Heads bowed, eyes closed, just for a moment. If you're in this room, you've never made Jesus Lord of your life, it is time to get that right. Come on, man, stop messing around. You're watching online, pray this prayer with me. As we all pray together, make Jesus Lord of your life today. Come on, let's pray it together. Dear God, I come to you today, and I ask you to save my life. Jesus, I do believe that you died on the cross for my sins. You rose from the dead, and you live forever. Be Lord of my life. From this day forward, I will live for you. Holy Spirit, fill me, empower me, help me to live this life all the days of my life. In Jesus' wonderful name, and everybody said, amen. As Travis comes to dismiss you, let's give God thanks for how awesome he is. Come on, give him thanks. Thank you.